Welcome back. This is Kerbalized Realism. It's been a while. We return to the story, and the year is 1954. On February 25th, another Bioman is ready to be launched. The top stage, along with almost half its fuel, has been removed. The Kerbals deemed it to be useless, as this contract is only needing to be about 80,000 kilometers. No, no. 80 kilometers, not 80,000. That would be 80,000 meters. After some intense heating and pressure, two of the fins are destroyed just before booster separation. If you like this Dell content, don't forget to like, and if you're not already, subscribe. And smack up that bell for future notification. After the fairing separation, the right way, unlike in KSP2, where it's all janky, you can see they added fins to the recovery capsule. To keep it pointed in the right direction, on descent. In case you're unaware, this is KRSS. No, KSRSS at 2.5 scale. In case you're wondering the, how it's earth and that it's not the full sizer, but it is bigger than the stock. With parachute deployment, it will result in a successful splashdown and the Kerbals will recover it. Into the mission control to grab the last one of the three low space bio experimentation contracts. This one will be to above 100 kilometers. Not 100,000 like I tried saying last time or whatever. 100 kilometers. It's March 17th. And the Irish Kerbals will be celebrating, don't you know? Jeb, back in the KX-1. Air launched. Hopefully closer this time. I believe last time was 500 kilometers out. This time, I think it's 250. He hasn't made it back to land yet. He's dropped at 10 kilometers high and he'll need to hit 400 meters per second and climb to 15 kilometers. Oh no, a complete engine failure. It has exploded. He did satisfy the contract beforehand though. Looks like he has made it over land, but he is away south of the Cape. Let's see if he can float it back or if he will once again ditch it in the water. And it appears as if the luck of the Irish was not with Jeb. And he does end up ditching it in the water once again. He has still yet to bring this thing back to put it on land. He's not far from the coast to recover easy. 35 days to replace the engine. On April 2nd, Vale gets back in the Sparrow. After clearance, she heads down the runway. She has a, a contract to maintain a level flight going between 500 and 500 meters per second without having rocket engines. Up she goes. We get a little onboard camera view and then she finishes the contract easily. Coming down, she sure does make landings look easy. With a nice glide angle and smooth approach, she just slides it down in like butter. But it is a good thing that's an awful long runway because she definitely takes her time getting down to it. And there's the touchdown. And this is off and a coast. Getting to the end of the runway, she makes a left hand turn towards the taxiway. And I think she's gonna run out of steam there and park it. Human related EDL tech finished on May 20th. That's important because it gives us mech job and more smart parts. On May 28th, Vale is back in the Sparrow, ready to take flight once again. Their normal back and forth rotation is thrown off by Jeb still waiting on that engine. Vale's contract for this flight is to reach a height of 10 kilometers 
and hold the speed between 550 and 600 meters per second. Their engine is fired up. There is some kind of little glitch and it is uh, slowly going down the runway. The Kraken is going to grab here in a second and make it very tricky looking. Whoa! But she uh, pulled it out and gets up uh, into the sky. Where she will climb to her 10k, hit her afterburners, reach that speed, and come on back. Here she is making that climb as she ignites them after burners, gets it under control, and up she goes after reaching the 10 kilometers. And satisfying that contract, she makes a wild turn, head back, and lower her altitude. After leveling out, you can see her speed here. It was actually two contracts, one to reach 10 kilometers and one to go between 500 and 60 meters a second. She blew past the runway she usually lands on and comes back around to the normal one where she makes a nice touchdown and they adjust her brakes so she can stop a little bit quicker than what she has been. She is awarded two new ribbons from Final Frontier. She has completed 10 contracts and withstood an acceleration of 8 G's for 3 seconds. I'm ending this here to keep the length down and viewer retention up. We'll see you next time for the second half. Goodbye.